Hello once again to this final look at the Shadows of Change DLC. Today's video, we're going to take a look at the third faction from the DLC, the Jade Court. This Grand Cathay faction is led by the tenacious Yuan Bo, also known as the Jade Dragon. He can be played in both Immortal Empires and Realms of Chaos, starting in Lustria in the Immortal Empires, and the Far Eastern Territories of Cathay in the Realms of Chaos. Regardless of what campaign you play, he starts with a force consisting of Jade Warriors, two Peasant Long Spearmen, Peasant Archers, Great Longmar Riders, a Jade Lion, and Onyx Crowman. Yuenbo is a mover and shaker of the Empire, and he ensures the safety of the nation through cunning, guile, and many layered schemes to keep his enemies guessing. All the while, he's working toward improving the defences of the Domain from the predations of Chaos, Norsken Raiders, and those unruly lords within the realm. His overall goal in the Realms of Chaos campaign is to bring balance to the Wuxing Compass. The Compass gains four new directions for the Jade Court faction specifically, and to do this, Yuenbo must control four different settlements across the map, constructing astromantic relays within each, granting bonuses for your faction wide. After you defend these cities from AI attack, the final incursion can be triggered, and campaign victory can be achieved once you succeed in this final battle. To aid in this endeavour, you have access to the Matters of State abilities, which require two resources, steel and stone, to use. Both are acquired slowly each turn, but can be earned a little quicker through winning battles, for instance. You'll want to earn these quickly to rapidly augment your troops, or to respond to any unexpected threats on the campaign quickly. Your settlements can be declared as fortress cities or commercial districts, one that increases your steel income, the other increasing your stone income. Steel can do nifty things like instantly finish unit recruitment, guarantee hero success in their special actions, completely refill an army's movement bar, you got it, and there's more. Stone on the other hand can instantly finish building construction in one of your settlements, grant a bunch of XP to a lord or hero, or even steal an ally's background income for multiple turns. Nothing is too low for old UN Bo, provided it aids Grand Cathay. But flowing like water, we move over to UN Bo himself, the third legendary lord of Grand Cathay. Being one of the Celestial Dragon Emperor's children, he also has the ability to turn into a dragon, much like his siblings. He's a hybrid melee expert and spellcaster, capable of using spells from both the laws of Yin and Yang. He's armoured and has Harmony Amplifier of 100% for any unit within his sphere of influence on the battlefield. Abilities-wise, he of course turns into a Jade Dragon, granting flight and improved melee attacks, but this does restrict his available spell lists and he loses the Harmony Amplifier bonus, though becoming a massive dragon I think does counter these small drawbacks quite a bit. The Emperor's Execution ability is a direct damage ability with a 50 meter range doing 274 to 549 damage per second with a 2 minute cooldown. Any enemies who are hit with this ability that are currently below 20% of their maximum hit points, though, will die instantly, making this very effective against single large targets or heroes. The Dragon's Fang ability inst instantly increases the base weapon damage and armor piercing weapon damage by 75%, and melee attack by 40 points for 20 seconds. Useful when you need him to annihilate something quickly, or to even the odds against a fresh opponent should enemy reinforcements arrive. Passively, he can attack gates in dragon form, he encourages his nearby troops, and he can hide in forests. The usual stuff, really. Mastery of Elemental Winds, though, is a spell buff that triggers when two or more units have this same attribute. Units with the Execution attack will execute units with less than 20% max hit points, like he does with his ability. Roiling Skies is a continuous hex that lasts 25 seconds on triggering and reduces enemy speed by 25%, and their melee defense by 20 points for all enemies in range. The Power of Yin is another hex that affects enemies in a 55 meter range and lasts 18 seconds triggered when he casts a spell. It reduces enemy armor by 10%, their speed by 10%, and their overall armor by a further 15 points. Yuen Bot is also an arcane conduit for better mana pool generation, while Armor of the Dragon's Gaze grants a 10% damage resistance to him and his allies, and they also gain a plus 4 leadership bonus and immunity to psychology in a 35 meter range. This is always active, making it important to keep him near the troops to reduce the effects of things like fear and terror. 
And finally, he boasts a 15% missile resistance and 25% spell resistance passive. Overall then, Yuen Bot is a highly versatile legendary lord, a combatant capable of getting stuck into the melee when needed, but a powerful spellcaster who can do considerable damage before battle is properly joined. His attacks are also magical for overcoming certain damage reduction passives, and he has a bonus when he fights against infantry, though he isn't actually counted as an anti-infantry unit. Of course, his dragon form is his ace up the sleeve when battles get hectic, though it is worth noting that, like his siblings, their dragon form is extremely vulnerable to missile fire, and they can drain hit points rapidly if you forget about them during a battle. Grand Cathay also brings a new melee lord to the roster with the Celestial General. These armoured, armour-piercing, anti-infantry lords are the perfect El Generico lord to lead your secondary armies or sacrificial forces to drain the enemy's numbers before sending in UN Bot to finish the job. Celestial generals do have a couple of active abilities though. The first is Lord of Grand Cathay, is an augment ability of a 35 meter range and 100 meter casting range. It grants allied troops 40 melee defence points increased and 20% physical resistance for 16 seconds with a 2 minute cooldown. Useful for keeping your elite troops together a little longer. Celestial Sweep, though, is a Vortex ability that does 120 damage a second that's 100% armor piercing. It does only last 2 seconds, though, with a 6 meter radius, so essentially you do 240 points of damage in a very small area, but if you cast it on those elite armored troops, it can quickly drop a few of them in a pinch. Passively, Celestial Generals encourage, they hide in forests and have a 15% missile resistance. Will of the Dragons gives them a plus 4 leadership bonus to troops in the 35 meter radius continuously. Nothing fancy, just a solid melee leader overall for your army, with a good armour and decent leadership. They can unlock a couple of mounts as well from your vanilla horse, all the way to a Jade Longmar to really make them stand out on the field. Two units I'm quite happy to see are the Jade and Jet Lions, both of which add some monstrous unit flavour to the roster. Jade Lions are Yang based, while Jet Lions are Yin. They both have armor-piercing attacks, and they suffer no movement penalty when traversing forests. Jade Lions have a Breath Weapon, active ability that causes 21 damage a second that counts as magical and fire for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. It lasts for 2 seconds in a 9 meter radius, but can be cast up to 100 meters away, with 2 uses in total. The Jet Lion doesn't get any Breath Weapons, but it does get Missile Mirror, which redirects enemy missiles back at them in a 200 meter range. The ability lasts 18 seconds with a 44 second cooldown, and is best used when close to enemy skirmishers but not actively engaging them in combat as it will send their shots back at them and do big damage while the jet lion engages another troop. Both of these lions cause fear and they can hide in forests and being that they're constructs they're immune to psychology. The jade lion has a 20% physical resistance while the jet lion has a 20% missile resistance. Jade Lions also act as conduits for magical energy, granting them a 20% power recharge, while Jet Lions grant a 20% spell resistance for all allies within 35 meters. Finally, the Jade Lion can cause fire damage with its melee strikes, while the Jet Lion can destruct uh, spellcasters, causing miscasts at 100% chance and reducing their physical resistance if they are hit by them. As a duo, these units are the standout addition of the DLC for Grand Cafe, in my opinion anyway, and they look amazing on the field. Next up is the Onyx Crowman, a flying melee infantry unit attuned to Yang Harmony. They're very fast, like bat swarms or harpies, and can vanguard deploy. Their very presence causes fear, and with their Eyes of the Empress ability, they increase visibility range by 80%, making it harder to move units stealthily around the field. You can use them essentially like any other fast-moving unit that flies. You send them toward the enemy skirmish line or artillery and quickly route those troops. Of course, arrows, bolts, or bullets will kill them very quickly, and sending them in alone into the melee won't go well for you either. You can use them, however, to flank a unit already engaged, and with their fear causing passive, they can break morale quicker. Finally, we have the Jangu War Drum, a war machine built purely for support, and is balanced equally with yin and yang harmonies. In fact, this unit amplifies harmony of both by 25%. Ability-wise, it can use a Bastion of the Great Cities to increase friendly armor by 24 points at 100 meter casting range with a 30 second cooldown. A Disdain of the Dragon Emperor will increase a unit's melee attack by 8 points and make them immune to psychology, also at a maximum of 100 meters. These skills are, however, mutually exclusive, so choose wisely before sending the music to the drummers. 
Passively, the war drum is unbreakable. It has mastery of the elemental winds, which will harmonise well with UN buff, and troops within a 50 metre radius of it will have an 8 point leadership buff and a 15% missile resistance for the drum, not the troops. Do note, however, that the Jangri war drum is not a combat unit, and as such, it can be destroyed very quickly by any unit that manages to get into combat range with it. Like the corpse carts for the vampire counts, these units are there to keep the troops in the fight and use their buffs to augment the front line. The increased harmony can help with powering up your troops as well, and if you're harmonised correctly, this can be a big help. And that wraps up my three-part look at the slightly controversial Shadows of Change DLC. Like I said in my previous video, the price is a sticking point for sure, and if you massively enjoy playing any of the factions in the DLC, it's an easy decision to make. But if you aren't, I'd honestly recommend leaving it or waiting for an inevitable Steam sale if you are the type to collect all the DLC for a game. Shadows of Change is a solid DLC mechanically, it offers interesting new mechanics, new start locations and cool looking new units, but the price is a tad eye-watering when you compare it to other faction DLCs like the more recently released Chaos Dwarves. But as always, I'd like to think, thank you all for sticking with the video for this long, thanks for watching, have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.